Good morning and welcome to Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. This is Lisa Condit and I am so excited to be here with Avril. Avril Capers is the Director of Marketing and Research with the Telegram and Gazette. Good morning, Avril. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Avril and I have been doing some serious bonding lately. We All, have. We have. All about the Distinguished Speaker Series and we're going to tell you more about that partnership that we have going on later. But first, I think our listeners want to know more about you. So tell us what you do over at the TNG. Okay. Well, I've been at the TNG for more than 30 years. Absolutely love it there. I've worked in a variety of roles. Right now, I am the Director of Marketing and Research, and I have a wide range of responsibilities. Um, we're responsible for the Telegram and Gazette brand and marketing, day-to-day -day responsibilities. I'm working on some strategic research projects. And then the part of my job, which I really love, um, is the community sponsorships and also the development of partnerships. Oh, absolutely. That's when we get to work with great people like Ex each other. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you had mentioned you've been with the TNG for a long time, mm. 30 years. I've been in this field for a little over 20, so I remember the TNG way back when. You mentioned you've been in a variety of different roles. What was your first role with the TNG? Well, I started at the TNG in the advertising department. Mm -hmm. As the advertising secretary, I was going to college, um, needed a job, and uh, knew somebody that was working at the newspaper. Got an interview, and I started in the advertising department. So uh, from there, worked in HR and then in research and marketing. So it's been great. Oh, how fun. I remember my first job was for Business Wire, and mm -hmm. I was the newsroom assistant, which meant I got to do every job everybody else hated because mm -hmm. I was the most recent employee. And that's when I really became familiar more with the TNG, all the different dailies. And I remember a product that started, it was Industry Tracks, and we had... We were talking a little bit before we started the program about how have things changed in newspapers. I mean, God, 30 years is a long span. It gives you a nice snapshot of the development of media. Yeah, it has been crazy. Of course, when I started out, it was just the print paper. It was the Daily Telegram, the Evening Gazette. We had two papers. Two papers were published. Um, it was crazy. And then we went to the one paper, Telegram and Gazette. Uh, then the introduction of the Internet and our website, Telegram. Com. I mean, it's really changed so much. Our reporters are out there now uh, doing video, shooting video. I mean, it's multimedia now. It's crazy. And you raise a good point because we're all like our own media points because we have access to all of that multimedia. But we still need those credible news sources to pull it all together. And you can go places where... I and my friends can't go to get the facts, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, our staff of reporters and photographers is really great. We have some great journalism oh, at the TNG. Are. We love working with you. You guys have been very supportive about the Hanover Theater from the very beginning before mm -hmm. we even opened. I have to say, it's a marketing and PR person's dream to have a paper like the Telegram and Gazette in the hometown that loves and supports you is fair and mm -hmm. tells people when maybe <laughs> something isn't quite up to snuff. That rarely happens. Never. Huh? Right. Never. Well, rarely. <laughs> <laughs> we're human. But it's been a really great partnership. So we're looking forward to doing even more together. Do you want to tell people about the new endeavor that we've been oh, working on? Oh, yes. Very, very excited about this. As you said, we're a huge supporter of the Hanover Theater. And TNG has always been very community focused. And we looked at this partnering on a speaker series as an opportunity to bring widely recognized speakers to Worcester who are leaders in building community and um, diversity and health care and education. And we know that they can offer perspectives to the community um, that will be very exciting, very informative. Oh, absolutely. So we should tell people who these speakers are. Yes. We, we kick off the whole series. And just as a sidebar, the... The Worcester Connects Distinguished Speaker Series is going to be a fabulous subscription type of product. So we are offering very limited subscriptions to the full four speakers. And these aren't just nationally recognized. These are superstars on topics, healthcare, community building, crisis with youth in America. And we kick the whole thing off with Rudy Giuliani. How exciting. I know. On November 6th, I am really looking forward to it. I mean, who better to uh, to start off our speaker series than Rudy? I mean, um, 
what he did to transform New York City was really amazing. Crime rates came down, the city was cleaned up. I mean, it was he's a phenomenal person and totally. who knows what lessons can be learned. Well, just watching him and how he responded to 9/11 obviously and the mm. ma- aftermath of 9/11, what an example of leadership, compassionate, positive thinking. He got it all done. Mm. And he really took that city under his collective wings. He got everybody else to really support what was going on there to rebuild the city. And I think that it's come out on top. And there are some similarities between New York City and Worcester. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we've been talking about? You know, just as far as the revitalization aspect. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, as we know, so much is going on downtown. I mean, from our vantage point, we can see it all from the downtown area. And... um, What better than to bring him in and talk about some of these subjects like revitalization and and what they did there and and bring some of those stories here and what can we learn from it? I really think there are lessons to be learned. Right, and thank God we haven't had a disaster like he had to deal with, and I hope that we never do. But looking at the lessons learned from that and the steps, there are some similarities. I'm not going to pretend that we've had a terrorist attack because hopefully we never do. Right. But boy, inspiration times 100,000. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you had some fun fa- fun facts about him. Well, I did because, of course, bringing him here is, is just great. And I thought, well, I want to learn more about him and what he's doing. And I, I probably knew this, but I had forgotten that after the terrorist attacks and because of his leadership – that he was recognized by Queen Elizabeth II, who gave him an honorary knighthood. Ah, Uh, So I just have to say, Elton John needs to move over because the knight, Rudy Giuliani, is coming to town. He does. Sir (laughs) Sir Rudy. We're just going to have to call him Sir Rudy. That's all. Absolutely. So, yeah, and um, realizing that he was um, really born and bred, educated in New York, and he was an associate attorney general under the Reagan administration, didn't know that. Um, He's had a lot of different jobs. Right, and the theme of his presentation on November 6th is One City, One Standard, and that really gets to the heart of what a lot of people are looking for here in Worcester and Worcester County. We want one standard of living for all, right? Right, absolutely. The next speaker in our series is Benjamin Carson, MD, or Dr. Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, yes. <laughs> Dr. Carson, <laughs> however we want to refer to him. And he's going to be talking about future trends in medical science. Now, when I say that topic, it is not nearly as exciting as what he's really going to get to the heart of. He is a renowned pediatric neurosurgeon. He is an inspiring storyteller and New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, he is. He's quite incredible. I mean, from the very beginning, growing up in poverty, uh, his mother, a single parent, poor grades, low self-esteem, and really through the help of his mother and through education and uh, persevering, he really challenged himself and uh, became the kind of person that that he has become. He's inspirational, and he brings that inspirational message um, to his talks, and he will bring this to our speaker series as well. And he really shows that it doesn't matter where you start. No. With the right attitude, the right skills, the right education, the right drive, you can really go anywhere. I mean, think about that neurosurgeon. Right, right, absolutely. Um, And it was uh, very interesting to find out that he has more than 60 honorary doctorate degrees bestowed upon him. Wow. I know. He has the, um, also he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by the president, um, the highest civilian honor. Um, And he has a really exciting uh, scholars fund program that he set up, Um, two programs. One is a scholarship program for, um, for young students, and another one is a reading project, which creates settings in school systems where where children can just go and read and be quiet and discover the joy of reading. Isn't that fabulous? So... You know, obviously, Dr. Ben Carson is a very, very smart person. So if you're listening to this and you're like, ooh, I don't know if I really want to listen to a pediatric neurosurgeon, know that he is also a patient's advocate. So what better person to get the perspective of the questions you should be asking and how to interpret what the doctors are telling you than somebody who's right there in the field? So 
for people in the medical field as well as all of us in the public, this is a really valuable presentation and speech. He knows how difficult it can be for individuals to obtain the information that's truly meaningful and important to them. Not only that, he gets to the hard issues surrounding the medical field while sharing his story with his audiences. Interestingly, he's also a cancer survivor. So he talks about living a balanced life. He talks about healthcare in a holistic sense with the knowledge of one of the leading pediatric neurosurgeons in the world. He does. And one thing I think we should mention as well, that after we listen and engage with the speakers, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions as well. So there will be that interaction um, with the speakers. Avril was mentioning that people are going to have the opportunity after these presentations to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I think that will be great. That will make a difference. I mean, he will be able to speak on so many topics that are relevant to the community. Um, it's, It's amazing how much he's accomplished. It is. Now, do you have any questions that you want to ask him, Avril? Uh, I don't think so. I'm kind of going to listen to the talk, play <laughs> off of it, and see what's there. Okay, so for everybody else, if you <laughs> prepare something, I bet there are going to be a lot of people who want to ask questions. So think about it. Obviously, you want to relate it to what he's talking about that day. But come to these events and really know that you're going to be networking with really engaged, intelligent people from a lot of different areas. We're thinking that Corporate leaders are coming, nonprofit leaders are coming, engaged citizens are coming. Who else is coming, Avril? People from the schools. I mean, when you think what he's done with the education and his uh, projects, his uh, reading project, his Carson Scholarship Program, I mean, he really has, he does appeal. He appeals to just about everyone. You know what I love about the Worcester Connects Distinguished Speaker Series is that each one of these people is an obviously inspiration and a great example for us to draw on i'm getting pumped up just talking about them i haven't even heard them speak yet i am too lisa (laughs) so you know who i'm really looking forward to though this is my favorite okay okay i think i I I know i think you do i think you do too and it's dd myers she's a political analyst and commentator contributing editor of vanity fair and a best-selling author and hello former white house press secretary now avril is that somebody who has reached the pinnacle of what you and I would want to do or what? Oh, I think so. I She's she's fantastic. I've heard her speak on TV. I've seen her on TV. She is great. I mean, she was, she served as the White House press secretary during pre, uh, President Clinton's first term. And she was the first woman and one of the youngest people ever to hold that job. I think she was maybe 31 when she was doing it. I, I just can't imagine. It's amazing. And so I was joking on my Facebook page the other day about, hey, who needs to watch reruns of West Wing when we have got the real deal coming here to the theater? Put the TV aside. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no no reason to watch that night. No. Uh, she's great. She is really, uh, really going to bring a lot to the crowd, to, uh, to the series. Absolutely. And I love her topic why women should rule the world. Now, there was a little conversation about this. Because, there was. <laughs> right. We don't want to offend anybody. But, of course, you know, that is the name of her best-selling book. And she has a lot of really good points. And it, they're not just for women. It really talks about her own path-breaking career experiences, right? And she really talks about the issues facing women in Washington that also apply to us here in Worcester, Massachusetts, New England. She will be sharing moments from her tenure in the Clinton administration and her work as a political analyst. But really, I love this. She says, women tend to be better communicators, better listeners, better at forming consensus. All right, so none of our um, boyfriends, spouses, any men in our in our lives would probably agree with that. However, we know it's true. We do. And she she goes on and she explains that in a highly competitive and increasingly fractious world, women possess a kind of critical problem-solving skills that are urgently needed to break down barriers, build understanding, and create the best conditions for peace. So she brings it right back. And men and women do love hearing her speak. Overwhelmingly, the feedback that we saw from the Speakers Bureau is that everyone, underline, bold, Everyone really loved her, thought she was fabulous and inspiring, and wanted her to speak longer. So this is not going to be a rant on men. It is not. Definitely not. Everybody is welcome. And as you said, 
everyone is going to enjoy um, her topics, and it's not just for women. It's for it's for everyone. I mean, and regardless of male or female, it's not every day we get the opportunity to hear a former White House press secretary talk about the issues that they were facing in their office. Right. How exciting. A firsthand look at what she went through. I mean, it's great. And her book, it's a bestseller. She has a lot to say. And it's good for everybody to know what that perspective is. It is. Bring it back home. Bring it back to the That's area. Right. What does she have to say? What what can we take from that as a community? Absolutely. So I'm really looking forward to Dee Dee Myers. I think she's a hot ticket. I can't wait to meet her in person. I think I'm going to be stalking her backstage. <laughs> Don't tell John Rossbrook. I'm going to have to sneak in when he's not looking. Then we also have a fascinating speaker that really rounds the whole thing up in March, March 20th, when we have Jeffrey Canada. He is an inner city youth and education advocate, but I don't really feel like that truly describes him. I, it really doesn't. I mean, he spent 20 plus years with the Harlem Children's Zone, um, and it's a nationally recognized uh, for pioneering work helping children and families in Harlem. And he's a passionate advocate for education reform. And the exciting thing is, he has brought this program, the Harlem Children's Zone, to other areas of the nation. So it's it's really nationally known. Oh, it's even more than that because it's not just him who has brought it. it was. President Obama, who used his program as really the foundation for the cities of promise and Worcester right. being one of the original cities of promise. Mm. Where else are we going to have the opportunity to hear somebody who is nationally recognized as really knowing how to turn cities around by engaging youth and getting everybody involved? And then that applying to this city I know. in Worcester, it's right here. He's it talking is. about us. And he hasn't even met us yet. Right, right. And so uh, what could be better than that? That really is very exciting. Well, um, and the questions afterwards, he's going to know the answers. He and is. <laughs> that's, that's really amazing to me. So I think anybody that's heard of him, knows of the program, they really have to come to, uh, to this speaker series. They really have to come and hear what he has to say ask the questions. It's really going to be wonderful. Right. And anybody who's really interested in raising the quality of life for children and families here in this area, he is the pioneer of that very movement. And he is a passionate advocate for education reform. And that is one of the hottest issues that we face. It is. And um, look who we have to talk about it. Nobody better than um, Jeff Canada to talk about it. Well, and so we've talked a lot about the different issues that we're addressing here. You know, we've got health care. We've got city building and revitalization. We Did I say education already? I don't know. Education is so important. I just want to say it over and over and over again. <laughs> but we've got leadership and health care, diversity. The goal here is for all of us to gain a deeper understanding and to really enjoy some stimulating conversation, network with leaders, engage yeah. citizens, educators, business owners, concerned stakeholders. Everybody is going to find value from every single one of these speakers. They really are. I mean, people in the community, they're passionate about building community. We really are. We, we're passionate about education and health care, business development. It's very exciting. So one of the things that I think is really great is that we were able to package these four speakers together into that subscription. And right. the reason I say that that's great is because, obviously, they don't all cost the same amount of money to get here. Exactly. All right. And so part of what we've talked about in the past behind the scenes is what really goes into building a series. What does the ticket price go to? And all the $2 actually ends up going to promoting and getting the speakers or the entertainers that are coming here. So obviously, Rudy Giuliani is an expensive speaker. He is. He is. <laughs> if we sold these speakers separately, I think we'd find that there was a disparity between... Mm -hmm who was attending which presentations. And we really do want this to be accessible for all. We do. So first of all, we are offering a very special incentive to students. For just $98, they that's, can go see all four of these speakers. That's great. That's amazing. Yes. And then for you and me, it's under $200 to see each of all four of these speakers. Again, 
that's less than $50 for each one of them. It really is a bargain. It is a bargain. But I don't want to undermine the quality of this program because it has a nice name to fit. Worcester Connect's Distinguished Speaker Series. These are the heavy hitters that we all want to see. And these subscriptions, limited in volume, and you're going to get the best seat. So you're going to be right up front where nobody else can get. That's going to be the same seat you get for each one of the four, just like our Broadway series. So really consider doing that. You're going to want to be there. I think that, don't we have a little catchphrase with the with the be inquisitive, be informed, be inspired, be a subscriber? Be a subscriber. <laughs> we do. And Lisa, I think, did we mention when they are coming? I don't know if we've mentioned the no, dates No, I think so that's an important thing, Avril. I think we need to do that. So, so we have Rudy Giuliani. He's coming November 6th. We have Dr. Ben Carson, January 9th, Dee Dee Myers, February 27th, and Jeffrey Canada, March 20th. For more information on any of these, please go to our website, thehanovertheater.org. You can call our box office at 877-571-SHOW. Our friendly box office staff is happy to help you. And we are looking forward to seeing you all at the theater. Anything else you want to add? Any more little trivia bits? Or who's your favorite speaker that's coming? Oh, I have to tell you, I'm really excited about Rudy Giuliani I coming. <laughs> I can't. I think he's going to be great. He is. I mean, I, I'm really excited, but they're all good. And and I think, you know, as you've said, bringing them here um, in one package as one series, a speakers that um, are different but yet connect with one another about issues that are important to the community. I think it's going to be a fabulous series. And we're really grateful to the partnership with you and the Telegram and Gazette, because without your support, we would have a hard time presenting this. Well, we're pleased to do it. We're very excited about the partnership as well. It's a great opportunity for us to work together and to reach all of you. So again, we'll see you at the Hanover Theater and check us out online, thehanovertheater.org. Avril, thank you so much for coming. It has been a complete pleasure speaking with you and we'll look forward to more information and more interviews with you and perhaps some of your co-workers about other exciting things that we're doing together. I hope so, Lisa. Thank you very much. You're welcome.